Hi everyone, Mary Ann Cowan here from Pinery Paper Crafts. It is March the 10th, one week away from um, St. Patrick's Day. I was going to say March break being a teacher. Today is the last day of school before March break and St. Patrick's Day is next Friday. So I thought I would show you some cute little things, all green. And I'm going to be featuring the gnome dies, which are super cute and were carried over from the whoops, see, carried over from the the last catalog. So they're still available. And then I'm going to be using the Lucky Clover stamp set. And although the punch for this is no longer available. It's super cute and it's not hard to fussy cut out the clover. It would have been better with a punch, but you can still do it. So those are the things I'm going to be using today. And I'm going to show you a embossing technique. Hi Cheryl. I'm back from holidays. So I'm going to show you an embossing technique that I used on the card. And I saw it done a couple of different places. So these are the two ways that I know how to do it. So we do have embossing powders in different colors, but if you want to get, let's say, your green ink to look embossed, well, it is embossed, um, there's a couple of ways you can do it. So I'm going to show you the two ways that I know how to do it. And if you're in my team, we're going to be doing this tomorrow at our team get-together. So there's a whole bunch of different sizes of shamrocks in this in a stamp set, and these ones I've just fussy cut. They don't take long at all. And I know some people don't like fussy cutting, but if you don't mind fussy cutting, then it's perfect. Okay, so the first way that I know how to do it is I think the best way, or it came out better for me than the other way that I did it. So you're gonna use your Stamparatus. I have the three different stamps mounted on my Stamparatus. I'm gonna pull in a piece of cardstock and my magnet. I'm going to use, I always call it a dust bunny. I know it's not a dust bunny. I don't know what it's called. Embossing buddy. And we had these long ago and now there's this awesome new embossing kit that's available in the annual catalog. Definitely worth it, if for nothing else, to get this. And these tweezers are pretty cool too. They're those reverse tweezers. It takes you a while to get used to using them, but they're awesome. So this is the first way that I've I saw that you can do this and it works really well. So just embot, take your little buddy and we're going to um, ink it up in green. You have to be careful what order you do this in so you don't ruin your stamp pads, your Versamark particularly. So I'm going to stamp it up. Uh, I think I missed a little bit. I did have to re-ink this ink pad. Then you press down. I know there's a bit of a glare. I'm just gonna show you so you get the idea. Oh, not bad. You could do it again if you want. I don't if I don't want to do that. So then you take your chamois. Don't forget this part or you will ruin your Versamark ink pad. So you have to clean it without moving your stamps. Now, I guess you could wait till it dry. I didn't. So then you take your Versamark and you're gonna go over again with the Versamark onto your green ink. There we go. So you can't tell, but now we have our Versamark on top of our ink. And what I like to use is a clipboard. This is from Dollarama. You need a wooden one though, not the plastic one. And then you just take it and you just, I'll just do the first little one so you can see how well it works. Alright, 
doesn't look like it picked it up. We're going to try this again. Maybe it was a bit too wet. Because it actually does not look like there's any Versamark on there. But I know it works because I already did it. Oh my gosh, I know what I forgot to do. Hello! Then you need to take your clear embossing um, powder. Oh my gosh, so silly. And put it on top. I was emboss I was heating up the that's better. So then let's try that again. Now you can tell I have my powder on it. Oopsie. This is real life stamping. I'll just heat up the first one so you can see it going now. It's so fun. Once your gun gets hot, it goes pretty quick. There we go. Isn't that cool? Can you tell how it's embossed? Very cool. I think I missed a spot there. So that's the one way to do it. I think this way it comes out shinier than the other way. But the other way to do it is, I'm just going to grab and I'll clean it first. I can't believe I forgot to put the embossing powder on. <sighs> Live videos. Okay, so now here's the second way. This way you have to be a little more careful. I think because this one has more room for error especially if you were doing a class. If you were doing a class, I would do all the stamping in green first and then have them um, do it this way. So the second way, I'm trying to think now to make sure I do it right. So you have both of them open, Versamark, ink. First you go in with your Versamark can't do it in the other order. You will wreck your Versamark. Go in with the Versamark, then you go in with your ink. And I'll do it right beside the other one so you can see the difference. Okay, it's not quite as dark green. That's fine. Oh! gosh I did it again you can tell I haven't been in my craft room a lot lately hopefully it's gonna stick no, we're good I'm just gonna put the lid on that knowing me I'll spill it now Now I didn't use the embossing buddy on this one beforehand, but it's clear embossing powder, so it's not really such a big deal, but I can see some little spots. So just so you can see the difference, this one was done using the Stamparatus. So I stamped first in green and then stamped in the embossing powder. It's clear embossing powder. And this one I did the embossing powder first and then right onto the ink pad. Now, the person I watched do the video said it doesn't, oh my gosh, hurt your <laughs> ink pad, so I'm trusting her that that is right. This powder is so fine. Either way, it looks pretty cool. So, that's my little tip for today. And that's what I used for this card. So this is a bit of a fun fold, it's not too um, extravagant, but I've just cut off an inch and then I've used this stamp from the stamp set to just ink up the edge and you could go further if you want. Then I have Granny Apple Green. Am I 
could add a little bow to this. I needed something else. I just didn't know what. So granny apple green. And this is the Dandy Designs stamp um, celebration paper that I love. And I originally was going to use this side, but then when I put it on, these didn't show up quite as well. So I actually flipped it over, and I like it better on this side. There's a whole bunch in there that you could use, but I had my mind set on the stripes, and then I thought it was a bit too busy. So we're just going to put that like that. And... I have two shamrocks I'm going to put on. This one is going to be flat and this one I'm going to pop up. And I am going to add a little bow I think to this one. I just thought of that as I had pulled this ribbon out to do the little treat container which we'll do next. I love this ribbon. So this ribbon will be going away because it's I think it'll be going away. Probably be going away. To grab my scissors. What's fun about this ribbon is you can fray the ends just to give it a little more um, texture I guess would be a good word. I find if you use your little pokey tool otherwise it looks a little bit like a net. All right that looks good. So we could have one hanging off the edge because it does overlap a little bit. Let's put a little bit of glue on this one. And a dimensional on the other one. I think just one right in the middle. Hmm, that was my, I was playing around to make sure this technique was gonna work. And of course, remembering to do the Embossing powder is important. So let's just put this one like that. And then we're going to put this little bow here. Hey, Pat. And of course, you could add little gems and stuff as well. Then I have my sentiment, Happy St. Patrick's Day, and it was going to go on like this, but I thought it kind of got lost, just the white on white, so I just grabbed a piece of green, and I'm just going to make a little backing for it, totally by hand. So I'm just going to... Trim it up because it's I don't want it too big. I just want a little pop of color. So that's going to go there and I'm just going to put this on flat. Oops. You want to make sure it doesn't go past the edge of your card, obviously. And then I do have this other little shamrock. Now this one is not heat embossed. This one has Wink of Stella. So I think I'll put a little dimensional on this, uh, yeah, dimensional. There we go. So there's our card, Happy St. Patrick's Day. Like I said, if you're on my team, then we're going to be making this card tomorrow. And you can see how the embossing really shows up. So you can emboss any color of ink that you have using either one of those techniques. And this one actually, oh, and I will tell you on this one, and you can't even tell, I tried just going, just stamping it, cleaning it, inking it up again, and then just eyeballing it and going over top. And although it didn't line up perfectly, you can't tell because it's clear embossing powder. If it was a photopolymer stamp, it would have been easier to line up, but hey, I think it's pretty good. So that's our card. And now we're gonna be making a little treat container with the little gnomes. So I got these when I was down in the States, York peppermint patties. They always have the fun spring colors. 
I just want to say the candies in the States are more fun than the candies in Canada. So they come pink, green, and gold. If you don't have those because you haven't traveled down to the States lately, you could use um, Giardelli and green and gold is perfect for St. Patrick's Day. So that will fit as well. Now I did cheat and I used the scalloped tag topper. We do have a die for um, tags as well that I could have used, but I was being lazy. And a lot of people have this one or the other one in their stash. It's just so handy. I always do it, although the biggest um, slot is for two inches, I always do it just slightly less because I find exactly two inches is a little bit tight. So this piece is just shy of two inches and I trimmed it down to 10. I started out with it bigger and then it was too long. So I trimmed it down to 10 and if you're using these ones you might want to trim it down even more or maybe not. So I trimmed it down to 10 and then I scored it so 10 half is 5 so this is four and a half and five and a half. No, four and a half and five and a half if you did it this way. Score it before you do this part though. I find that easier. Then I took that stamp I showed you earlier and I just stamped up the front of it. You could do the whole thing but I didn't bother. Now for this I am actually going to attach it. You could, if you want to get fancy, make a little piece that folds and holds it in, but you know what? Someone's gonna get this and just rip it open, so that's what I'm doing. Now I haven't made, I do have these gnome dies, and I haven't actually used it to make the little gnome that you can make with all the pieces, so that's what I did today. So I cut the hat out of this same pack of paper the little nose out of petal pink, his little pants, and you can't tell, but it's got little X on his boots. It's totally cute. And then the little beard is also got some detail on it. So um, I think I don't want this really as high as a dimensional, but I'm going to put a couple of glue dots just to give it a bit of height, a little bit more than just glue. Okay, they're sticking on this side now. It's funny. So it's got a little area where you can tell where to put the nose. And you can play around. I went with the Cajun craze beard because he's Irish. And that fits right underneath. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue right along the edge. This is like I used to do paper dolls when I was little. This is, reminds me of paper dolls. And then his pants, well there's not, you don't see much of them, just fit like this. And if you're coming tomorrow, we're going to be making this. I did also die cut, uh, not die cut, there's no die cuts for this. I also did stamp and cut out a little shamrock for his hat. That I will pop up. just so it looks super cute. And of course I'm going to pop him up. Ah, he's so cute. And you could just change the color and make a little Easter gnome. I was actually at Dollarama today. Oh, I think it's right behind me. And found these little gnomes. Oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to use these for, but it was inspiration. So you could do spring colors, and he's got little plaid pants. So cute. And you could actually put something over top of his feet as well. So let's just go ahead and put this on. I think this would be a cute little treat for someone for St. Patrick's Day. And I have the parakeet party metallic woven ribbon although this is granny apple green I think it'll be cute this ribbon's not really that big so you could use a thicker ribbon if you want but I just thought the color was fun nice and bright All right, 
right, there we go. Adorable, and this one I'm not gonna fan out, but of course you can if you want. All right, so there we have our cute little gnome shamrock, gnome treat, and our happy St. Patrick's Day card. And the technique that I taught you, if you're, well, some of you are, may have already known it. I had heard about it, but I wasn't really exactly sure how to do it. So now I know. But lesson learned, make sure you put the embossing powder on. If you just heat up the glue, then that really does absolutely nothing. So if you missed the first part of the video, I did show you how to heat emboss with clear embossing powder, Stampin' Up clear embossing powder which everybody should have because then you can use any color of ink that you have and make it um, embossed very easily. All right, those are my cards for today. I will make sure they get up on the on my website, MarianneCowan.com. If you're interested in ordering any of these products, you can go to my website and use the host code. And I appreciate all your orders. If you, I do appreciate it if you like or share the video. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, I invite you to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification button so that you will know next time I post a video. Thanks everyone and have a great weekend. I'm happy to report we do not have any snow in the forecast for this weekend. So hopefully, I do, we do have snow next week because I, we were snowshoeing out in the back and I said to my husband, it's going to be a long time before we're wearing sandals back here because there is a lot of snow out in the woods. But it's only March. All right, have a great weekend, everyone. I did just post my next upcoming class. It's an all occasions class, April 1st, not an April Fool's joke. And just four cards, there'll be a sympathy, birthday, thank you. Um, just a sweet class where you can stock up on some of the cards that you need. So check out my website, Marianne Cowan slash events if you want to check out any of my upcoming classes. Thanks everyone, have a great weekend and we'll see you next week.